Large Animal Medicine The Pathology, Clinical Symptoms and Diagnosis of Anaplasmosis in Cattle This presentation is possible thanks to our sponsored student and veterinary channel contributor, Dr. Masna Ali Muhammad from the University of Veterinary and Agricultural Sciences in Lahore, Pakistan. Anaplasmosis is a tick-borne disease that affects cows, buffaloes and other species. In this presentation we are going to discuss this condition from the large animal medicine point of view. The term anaplasmosis is also known as gall sickness or tristasa parasitaria. Hope you are all doing well. Today I am going to deliver a lecture on a very important case called anaplasmiosis. Uh, it is also called bovine anaplasmosis rickettsiales. So let us start. Uh, to start with the introduction, bovine anaplasmosis rickettsiales, also called tick-borne disease, characterized by extravascular hemolysis, anemia, jaundice, and sudden death. It is synonymous to gall sickness. So now, what is the etiology of anaplasmosis? So for, uh, first of all, uh, we will see a little bit of the taxonomy uh, it is from order rickettsiales fami uh, family anaplasmatici genus anaplasma species anaplasma marginal and anaplasma central small pleomorphic gram negative obligated intracellular organisms are involved anaplasma always cause disease in sheep and goat Host or for anaplasma marginal and central are both seen in cattle. Anaplasma always causes disease in sheep and goat. Cows are more resistant to disease than older cattle. This resistance is not due to clostrum antibody from immune dams. Animals become carrier after recovery. BOS Indicus breed of cattle, Boss Indicus breed of cattle appear to process a greater resistance to anaplasma marginal infection than Boss Taurus breed. To talk about the transmission, uh, it is uh, it starts by the tick bites. 19 different types of ticks transmitted this disease: Exodus, Dermacenter, Rhipicephalus or some of the common important ticks. Uh, to talk about the mechanical transmission, uh, transmission, the fresh blood from the infected animal is susceptible cattle from biting flies. Blood contaminated for mites like needles, ear tagging and dehorning and castration equipment results in the transmission of anaplasmosis. Talk about the pathogenesis of uh, anaplasmosis. It starts from the feeding of infected blood meal by the vector to the bacteria go into the midgut of the epithelium cell of the thick tick and then the first uh, bacterial application occurs. Bacterium then migrate to and invades the salivary gland Second round application in salivary gland and bacteria present in the saliva of the tick and then this tick take blood meal from the healthy animals and inoculate a bacterium in the body and this bacterium enters to the RBCs and form the vacuoles. Pathogenesis continues. The bacterium and replicated by the bacterium are replicated by binary fission in RBCs up to 75% of the RBCs can be infected in acute febrile stage. The infected RBCs identified by the macrophage in spleen, lymph node, liver and bone marrow and the pathogenesis of infected RBCs by the macrophages erythrophagocytosis and then the lysis of RBCs in cytoplasma macrophage and the releasing hemoglobin in the cytoplasm occurs. The heme group contain iron in porphyrin ring and globin chain separated. Globin used 
again protein synthesis and porphyrin ring oxidized and then the producing delivery delivered in and releasing the iron billy verden converted to conjugate billy ruben in excess production the pathogenesis still continues there occurs the development of pre hepatic or hemolytic jaundice to the free iron into cell bind to the protein of the apoferritin forming ferritin ferritin becomes oxidized and degrade to form hemosiderin and then the excessive hemosiderin laden macrophages found in the spleen lymph nodes and bone marrow are observed and spleen and liver becomes enlarged due to excessive lysis of the rbcs mostly body tissue becomes yellow is due to the jaundice due to excessive lysis of rbcs in the spleen liver bone marrow and lymph node there is development of extra vascular hemolysis and anemia and at the last the scanty changes due to anemia occurs in the body so this is the life cycle of the anaplasmosis as it is a tick borne disease the feed infection of uh, tick rhipicephalus species uh, the animal eats that ticks uh, or the uh, tick uh, infects the uh, animal in the body of the animals the Uh, endothelial cells are first of all infected and these endothelial uh, cells then release the toxins and these toxins are then uh, go into the erythrocytes and the uh, rhipicephalus species then uh, again uh, uh, <clears throat> eats the uh, uh, blood of the cow and uh, in the mid gut of and uh, the pathogen goes into the mid gut of the rhipicephalus and from uh, mid gut to the salivary gland and from um, the salivary gland of rhipicephalus uh, uh, it goes again into the cow when the tick infects the cattle and this is the all the life cycle of the anaplasmosis now we are going to discuss the clinical signs first of all in the clinical signs we will see the fever there will be depression there will be decrease milk production there will be anemia pale or yellow mucus membrane and there will be dehydration in the animal uh, in order to discuss the clinical pathology it includes the intra erythrocytic organisms pyrocytosis mark anemia so there is decrease hemoglobin pec cell volume and rbcs leukocytosis with neutrophilia macroscopic pathology there is pale anemic and jaundice all tissue and carcass pale and discoloration of lung liver is also enlarged with round stage and gallbladder is distended with granular by spleen is greatly enlarged and reddish in color urinary bladder contains bilirubin stained urine bone marrow hyperplasia is also seen in the clinical pathology after the post mortem now what are the microscopic pathology and the hemosiderin laden in macrophages and hemosideriosis found in many organs organ for example in liver Hemosiderin accumulates in hemo hepatocyte and cuffer cells. Vascular degeneration is seen. Canic canalicular co colitis, spleen and lymph nodes. There is congestion in spleen and lymph nodes. Medulla of the spleen contains erythrophagocytosis by macrophages, and bone mar uh, marrow contains erythroid. hyperplasia so what is the diagnosis as far as the diagnostic approach is concerned it is based on the clinical signs and the symptoms blood smear examination pcr elisa and the complement fixation test and in 
indirect fluorescent antibody test is performed for the diagnosis of anaplasmosis. The only treatment for the anaplasmosis is imidocort. This is all about the anaplasmosis. Thank you. Anaplasmosis is a tick-borne disease that affects cows, buffaloes and other species. In this presentation we are going to discuss this condition from the large animal medicine point of view. The term anaplasmosis is also known as gall sickness or tristasa parasitaria. Anaplasmosis is transmitted by tick bites. The causative agent, anaplasma, first infects the salivary gland and then proceeds to infect the red blood cells of the affected animal. Anaplasmosis bovina Anaplasmosis in cattle symptoms Anaplasmosis clinical signs in cattle Tick-borne disease Bovine anaplasmosis Anaplasmosis in cows Anaplasmosis in buffalo Veterinary channel Large animal medicine The pathology, clinical symptoms and diagnosis of anaplasmosis in cattle 